Hello everyone, good morning. Tonight AMA session with Dr. Ben. I'm Dr. Ben Benham, uh, founder of Happy Head. Uh, just to let you know that this AMA does not provide medical advice. It's intended for informational purposes only. It's not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, and treatment, and does not establish doctor-patient relationship. Welcome everyone. Uh, beautiful Tuesday morning in LA. It's finally sunny, somewhat sunny, and not rainy, which is great. So today, uh, basically, the, the topic is what are the main causes of hair loss. There are many different causes of hair loss, as there are many different types of hair losses. The most common type of hair loss uh, is what's called androgenic alopecia, which is male and female pattern hair loss, which is basically genetic based. But other things that will contribute to it are stress, stress from kids. Um, your diet basically makes a difference, what you eat, if you're vegetarian or not, um, and um, like hormonal factors, like your vitamin D, iron level, your actual testosterone level, things like that. So, and typically, what happens is that most people are genetically predisposed uh, to hair loss, and then you have some of these stressors that add on and basically accelerate that underlying genetic predisposition to hair loss. So, for example, in the past two years, we've seen like a lot of patients who got COVID or the COVID vaccine, and that kind of accelerated their underlying genetic predisposition, and they went through like a shedding phase. Or, you know, I have a patient, I just saw one last Last week, who is 100 pounds, doesn't eat anything, eats two bites of food and gets full. You know, when you check the blood work, low vitamin D, low iron, really doesn't take much protein. So basically, in that situation, basically lack of like like a good diet and lack of vitamins basically will contribute. Although it's not the primary cause, but that will definitely contribute to your hair loss. So there are many different reasons, and uh, you know I think the best thing to do is always to see a dermatologist to really get evaluated. Uh, but this is where Happy Head comes in. We have basically doctors that only specialize in hair loss, and we give you the right treatment uh, for the type of hair loss you have. So uh, here we go, guys. We're about to get started again. Thank you so much for the entire team here, by the way, for setting up everything as usual every week. Dutasterize is a large molecule and transdermal absorption is poor. Other companies are adding DMSO to the top of the Dutasterize solution to aid in the absorption. Is this something that Happy Head is considered doing and advisable? So uh, DMSO is interesting. Yes, we are definitely considering it. Uh, although Dutasterize is a large molecule, believe it or not, it still does get absorbed uh, because you, you could actually still check uh, serum DHC level on topical dutasteride and you see that it basically it, it is affected while using topical dutasteride so it does get absorbed and we know as a fact that when patients do use the topical dutasteride they do get better so the fact that the clinical results are there means it's going to get absorbed but I do agree with you it is a larger molecule the problem with DMSO is that it is irritating that's the problem but uh, yes we are currently working on it thank you so much for that recommendation um, what is the name of the condition that is being treated with happy head? So happy head is used to treat androgenic alopecia, which is male or female pattern hair loss. There are a lot of different types of hair losses out there as well. Uh, there's alopecia areata, which is more of an autoimmune condition. There's secretitial alopecia, which is like scarring type of alopecia. Uh, typically, happy head, we are uh, our goal is is not intended to treat those conditions. That being said, patients still with those conditions use Happy Head, and some of them still do see some improvement, so everyone's different. Is topical dutasteride more effective than topical finasteride? In clinical studies of oral finasteride versus oral dutasteride, oral dutasteride was more effective than oral finasteride. Reason being, reason is because finasteride inhibits one enzyme, uh, whereas dutasteride inhibits two enzymes that are responsible for the conversion of testosterone to DHT. That being said, there are certain patients that just do not respond to dutasteride. For example, I've had some patients that switched from finasteride to dutasteride and dutasteride did not work at all. So they went back to finasteride and it worked again. The reason is because in general, dutasteride does work better, but for some patients it just doesn't work at all. So, but in general, it is a better drug. How long before I see results? And what happens if I stop using the formula? Will I use all my newly grown hair? Great question. So typically results are seen within four to six months because you have to realize that hair goes through different hair, a couple hair cycles before you start to grow out. Uh, hair is one of those things that once it grows out, you have to continue to maintain to maintain it. You have to use the product. So if you stop using it, yes, you will lose basically that new hair growth. 
Um, I want to stop losing my hair. Please help. Okay, so there are many different reasons. Uh, there are many different ways and approaches basically to stop the hair loss. The oral medications and the topical medications. Generally, Happy Head was, uh, was created on the fact that the oral finasteride has more of sexual side effects compared to topical finasterides, according to clinical studies. So Happy Head's first and really best product is still our topical finasteride solution that combines finasteride with retinoic acid and minoxidil. I know there's some competitors out there now that basically have a similar product, but ours has three ingredients as opposed to two. And also, our minoxidil concentration is higher than anyone else. And more importantly, ours is a customizable product, which means if there's any issues, we literally could take the ingredients out for you and customize it. More importantly, our product is made on a monthly basis for our patients, where uh, our competitors really they make a huge batch where it sits basically on the shelf for months and months and months. So there's the topical treatment, and there's also oral treatments as well. So there's oral finasteride, or minoxyl and our super capsule which combines oral minoxyl finasteride and vitamin d all in one streamlining the entire process uh, and patients really are getting great results with the super capsule so i have lpp and frontal fibrosis alopecia diagnosed with biopsy will this topic will help retain the care and hairline great question so for those people that don't know what these are so LPP, basically, it's a form of a scarring hair loss uh, where people get scarred in the frontal hairline as sometimes in the eyebrows. Uh, again, typically, happy head is not indicated or used for these purposes. However, that being said, I do have patients that use them and they say that it does help. Typically, for those cases, they're tough to treat. I have a lot of patients with those conditions in my own personal office. Uh, I typically inject them with cortisol to reduce the inflammation. But again, I think you really have to see your dermatologist in person. Good morning. I've been using Happy Ed for six months and I've experienced much improvement. Thank you so much. We're great to hear that. Thank you for that feedback. And again, the key with what you said was that I've been using Happy Head for six months plus. So look, it does take several months for patients to see improvement. You cannot use the product for one month and expect to see improvements. It just does not happen. It doesn't happen with our product. It does not happen with any product out there. If anyone tells you that within a month you're going to see improvements, I would run away. What are your feelings on including a red light cap along with Happy Head prescription? We are literally working on it. I think it should... Uh, be on the website very very soon so um, I can't give you much of the details as I cannot talk about the agreement but it's I think it's already been form finalized so it should come to our website soon can you talk about stress related hair loss can the hair come back if the stress is loose do you need to be on a treatment forever great question stress related hair loss. There are a lot of things that could cause stress um, obviously work stress family stress. We may have patients, unfortunately, that are going through a divorce, and basically that could be very stressful. Uh, I remember after I had my own, my own first kid, there was a time that I was shedding for a while. Um, and also a very classic stress-induced hair loss is like pregnancy and also COVID. So uh, with a lot of those cases with stress-induced hair loss, as you reduce the stress and kind of, you know, move away with a certain timeline from that stressful event, a lot of the hair will come back. Um, if you go into tillage and effluvium where basically you go through such a dramatic event where you end up losing 50, 60% of your hair, not all of that hair comes back. Typically that happens in cases, uh, in cases where, you know, like it's called post postpartum so after pregnancy you go into tillage and effluvium and you lose 50 percent of your hair so in those cases you could get a lot of your hair back but not all of it obviously adding the topical or medications while you are shedding will help two ways one reduce the amount of shed that you have so instead of losing like 50 percent you can we may only lose 20 or 30 percent and number two is going to basically help faster basically to get back to where you were at the beginning uh great question though if I stop using the product, how long will it take for me to, to lose the results? Great question. So remember, you're going through a couple basically hair cycles to see the results and also for the results basically to start, you, to start going away. So once you start the product, you're going to see the results in four to six months. Once you stop, you're not going to lose the effect right away. It takes another four to six months for you to start losing the effect. Can diet help with hair growth? And also if someone 
lost a lot of hair years ago, is it possible to regrow the hair? So good, good question. So first of all, yes, diet and hair loss are very important. Um, I, I, I have, I saw a patient recently who vegetarian again, like ninety or hundred pounds, barely ate anything. On lab test, uh, she, her vitamin D was low, her iron was very low. Uh, so what we did, so uh, literally all we did was. Um, I had her start taking more protein, so I like whey protein concentrate, and the two type of whey proteins, concentrate and isolate. Whey protein isolate is all those proteins that people do for post-workout, and those are bad for you. Though all those post-workout protein shakes are bad for you. So you want to do what's good because those are all isolates. So you want to do whey protein concentrate, so we put on the whey protein concentrate, I had her do vitamin D two thousand IUs a day. We had we put on uh, iron. Uh, typically, I like the Whole Foods liquid iron, which is eighteen milligrams. But you may need more. And also, I had her take collagen as well, and add more cashews, avocados, and eggs to her diet. Um, and she came back literally four months later, and I took a photo again. And honestly, her hair was so much better. And it, and I see quite a bit of these, unfortunately, in, in vegetarians or. Typically, like in females that weigh like between 90 and like 110 pounds, uh, it, because they're just not taking enough nutrients in. You really need protein to build the hair. Imagine this. Let's say if you want to build a house and you have all the bricks in the world, but you have, um, but you have no workers there, you cannot build that house. It's the same thing with your hair. If you, if you you could take all the medications in the world, but if you don't have the essential protein, amino acids to make mo more hair, you cannot make hair. So you need that protein, that collagen, that vitamin D, that iron to really help with that hair growth. So I think diet really does help a lot. In guys, we typically say stay away from uh, soy milk. We also say stay away from um, energy drinks as well. So um, now, if you lost a lot of hair years ago, can I come back? Uh, I mean, it depends. I mean, if you still, when you look at your scalp and you see like a lot of fine hair, that means you still have a lot of those hair follicles there, so some of those hair follicles could come back. Uh, if you're complete bald, that hair is probably not going to come back. Uh, that being said, last week I saw a patient who is complete bald, still want to get his hair growth, so I have put him on topical and oral medication. To my surprise, some of the hairs came back, but again, that's not a very usual case. Um, my question is, after six months of happy head and experiencing much improvement, can I expect the hair in the front can I still expect hair growth in the frontal receding area? Yes, it is possible. So the longer you take it, sometimes you will see more growth, but sometimes you will hit a plateau. So everyone's different. Uh, but yes, you could probably expect more results. If you feel you're plateauing on the product or in certain areas doesn't help, probably going on the oral pill could accelerate that process as well. Also, please use a dermal roller. So the frontal hairline is sometimes tough to receive the growth. So when you apply the product and just get a dermal roller and gently roll back and forth. Um, how do I reach out to my dermatologist? Well, let me see which dermatologist. Well, I mean, on the platform, yes, you should be able to reach through your account. If you can, if you, through Happy Ed, uh, if you don't, you can't do it, just reach out to help at Happy Ed, and they'll be more than happy to connect you with your dermatologist that wrote the prescription. Uh, does topical flasher really have less side effects, or is it really the same? So uh, there are a lot of clinical studies out there that's showing that topical flasher has a lower risk of side effects, sexual side effects compared to oral. Uh, you could actually see a lot of those clinical studies on the website. It is the first blog I ever wrote on Happy Ed exactly three years ago. I think it's, April, it's dated April 1st, 2020. Uh, during COVID. So you could read those studies, but uh, I think in the clinical studies, um, it, the, the rate of sexual side effects, if you combine all the studies, was 0.35%. Whereas if you look at the clinical studies of oral finasteride, the rate of sexual side effects is about 2 to 4%. Uh, but again, you could read that study on our website. Go on our blog, please. Um, I Okay, so I have uh, stomach side effects from Happy Head, diarrhea. I'm only in a second bottle. Didn't happen in the first bottle. Um, I'm a 55-year-old female. I like the Happy Head. It's, um, so, okay, so let's see. So, usually getting diarrhea and stomach stuff is, is actually quite rare uh, from Happy Head. Uh, but what I want you, I want you to stop the product right now and reach out to a dermatologist who prescribed it. Um, but stop right now and make sure the side effects go away. Once the side effects go away and you don't have any other stomach issues anymore, um, 
restart but only do it two or three times a week and see what happens if the side effects come back and we had two or three times a week then stop the product completely and reach out to us and see what we could do for you thank you so much for reaching out to us uh can you also just please email us as well i'm also trying to get in contact with dermatologists as well again our email is help at thank you so much why did it drop her Will you make a foam or spray? It's a great question. So we actually have gone through extensive testing with our product. Uh, our, actually, our original bottle of Happy Hit, three, actually more than three years ago, it was actually a spray. Uh, there are two problems with the spray. I know that our competitors have the spray, but the two problems with the spray. Number one, it's actually very difficult to achieve a one ml coming out from a spray. You literally have to do it like 50 times. It's really difficult. We've tried it. Number two, the spray tips actually get plugged up by the minoxidil. And number three, when you spray it, especially if you have longer hair, all the product gets stuck uh, to basically to your hair and doesn't really get your scalp where you need it. So with a dropper, so we've actually done this test for a long time uh, and for, and the dropper basically allows you actually directly apply it to the scalp and rub it in. People get better results with a dropper. Now, if you want in a spray, you could buy a spray bottle from CVS or Amazon and pour into a spray bottle and spray your head. Uh, but we kind of did not want to make a spray bottle. It was not as efficient and patients did not get a great result. With respect to a foam, uh, it, there are a lot of issues, unfortunately, with the foam, with, especially when you transport it, uh, especially during colder weather, like a lot of the product-based ingredients precipitate out. Uh, that's why we don't have it in the foam. Again, we've tried in the past. It's just not, uh, the products are not very stable in the foam. For one with tension alopecia, what is the best treatment? Number one, reduce the tension, which means that don't put it. So what tension alopecia means, basically you're, having, you're pulling your hair back really tight. Let loose, do not pull the hair back very tight. Number two, using the product will actually definitely help along with the derma roll. So you could put the happy product on and then basically gently derma roll on top. It will really help it. Also, PRP helps as well. Um, are, is there a difference in diet recommendation for one since uh, we experience hormonal cycles? Is a great question. I mean, not really. I mean, I still like whey protein, collagen, vitamin D, and a multivitamin for everyone. For females, uh, I do recommend uh, adding an iron, and I typically don't recommend that for guys. Also, it is also recommended to check your vitamin B6 and B12 as well. I'm on finasteride minoxidil for more than 10 years and start seeing hair loss, should I move to the test ride? If yes, does Happy Hit recommend any blood work to verify the impacts on the hormone? Great question. So obviously you are plateauing. Now when you say you've been on minoxidil, are you on oral minoxidil or topical minoxidil? So if let's say you're on oral finasteride and topical minoxidil for 10 years, uh, I do recommend two things, either moving your finasteride to dutasteride and see what happens, or adding oral minoxidil to the regimen. Uh, if you want, you could have your regular doctor basically do blood work on your testosterone and DHT to see where they're at. And also, if you're above age 50, I would also recommend doing a PSA level. I, so let's see, I suffer from alopecia areata. I completely understand. I suffer too, I also have alopecia areata. My hair falls out in spots every once in a while. I'm currently on the minoxidil 2.5 ml of tablets. Which product would you recommend that will help my condition? So, so happy typically is not indicated for patients with alopecia areata. That being said, there are clinical studies showing that patients that use topical minoxidil and derma roller with al for alopecia areata it did help. So, so you could use the general, uh, uh, the general uh, standard happy formula, and it could help you, especially if you are already on the oral minoxidil 2.5 milligram. How long should I take time off once a drug plateaus? That's a very quite good question. Uh, we, t I mean, so patients that plateau, we actually do not recommend coming off because although you're not seeing much improvement, but once you get off the drug, you can actually do have regression. Uh, so my recommendation always is that when patient plateau is to add other stuff to it. So for example, if you're on the top of a happy head, my recommendation is to add oral minoxidil, oral finasteride, or the super capsule to your regimen. Or go from the topical finasteride happy head to topical dutasteride or even the kitchen sink. Um, so cancers also receive Kenalog shot every few months. Uh, let me see what 
Ken's question was so uh, so Ken yes, so Ken has alopecia areata. He's on oral minoxidil and also receiving Kenalog shot. Yes, that is correct. The gold standard for alopecia areata is Kenalog. There's also a new drug called Illumiant, although it's very expensive. And if you only have a few spots, I don't think it's worth it. Um, so so I will continue the Kenalog shots. I will also add topical happy along to your oral minoxidil. Uh, can you explain the systemic absorption for oral medication? Does it mean it's more effective? Great question. In clinical studies of topical finasteride versus oral finasteride, they both seem to be as clinically effective. And in fact, in our in our in my own personal clinical practice, uh, I've actually seen sometimes the the topical being more effective because see when you take an oral medication, it has to go through your entire body. It gets absorbed by other organs before it gets to the head. When you apply it topically on your head. This is where exactly you need it, so you're getting the majority absorption right there where exactly where you need it. So in some patients, the topical is honestly as effective, if not more effective than oral. But that being said, in some other patients, the oral could be more effective. The problem is with the oral, you just have more systemic absorption and more risk of side effects, such as sexual side effects like decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, testicular pain, and testicular numbness, all that stuff. Whereas those are uncommon with the topical. Is there a band that you recommend for the protein? So typically what I recommend, so is the whey protein concentrate. You could go on Amazon and just Google whey protein concentrate. I do not have a special brand, no. Is five milligrams of oral monoxide too much with it? All depends. Look, everyone's different. So, I mean, I definitely would not start off a 90 pound female at a five milligram oral monoxide. Let's put it this way. Uh, but I do have some other patients. Um, that uh, have been using oral minoxidil for a while and they slowly touch it up to 2.5 milligrams and then doing well. So sometimes I do put them up to 5 milligrams. Again, it depends on your height, your body weight, your tolerance, and if your side effects that you have. So it really depends on the individual. So you re that's something that you have to work individually with your doctor. Uh, what does topical finasteride, uh, what does a topical finasteride do you offer? Uh, we So our Topical finasteride now is a 0.3% topical finasteride, but again, but ours is also a customizable product, so you could also kind of go down to other concentrations if you need it. Uh, would taking tolerance breaks help to prevent plateauing in results? That's a good question. Uh, it really hasn't really been studied. Some people do it, but I'm not really sure if it basically prevents plateauing. How often should one use a derma roller and for how long? Once a day, twice a day, for how long? So first of all, I think derma roller is really important. Uh, if you look on the internet, everybody says, oh my God, use the 1.5 millimeter depth. I disagree with that. I actually feel the 1.5 really hurts quite a bit. So we recommend using the 0.25 depth. Uh, you want you want to use it once a day, ideally, but even if you do it every other night, that would be great. So once you apply the product, just get a derma roller and gently go back and forth, just for a minute or two. Don't press too hard. Don't make it, make yourself bleed. Don't harm yourself with it. Do not stay in the same area for a long period of time. You really want to roll it around. Uh, again, if you do it once a night, that would be ideal. Use a 0.25 depth. Now, when you again look on the internet, they say you use it like every other week, 1.5. Honestly, it really hurts. That I do not recommend that. I'm currently taking dutasteride. Is this an issue with the formula? No, not at all. So I have patients on oral dutasteride, oral minoxidil, and topical happy finasteride with minoxidil. Uh, that's really your ideal scenario. Um, so again, my only recommendation, don't start everything all at once. Uh, you, if you're on an oral dutasteride, you want to be on it for a while before you probably want to start the topical dutasteride or topical finasteride. <laughs> I'm under 50. I noticed that women under 50 are recommended spironolactone. Why is that? A great question. So spironolactone is the number one choice of oral medication for female hair loss in the U.S. I'm the number one writer of spironolactone actually in LA. Um, but again, things are changing. And in my clinical practice, I'm actually seeing that oral monoxidil could work much better for females with, uh, with that compared to oral spironolactone. So uh, 
I'm slowly starting to switch some of my female patients to oral minoxidil, and you could buy that happy head as well. Um, oral minoxidil blood pressure medication, just like oral spironolactone, they are both FDA approved medication that are used off label for hair loss. Uh, oral spironolactone side effect includes um, dizziness, or lightheadedness, chest pain, shortness of breath, headache, and heart palpitations. Uh, there are some patients that we will that you could combine oral spironolactone at low dose with oral minoxidil, uh, and I think Happy Head is coming out with that formula very soon. Um, again, if you have any questions, reach out to our dermatologist and they will help you. Uh, but again, I believe that oral minoxidil could be better than the oral spironolactone. Does microneedling of scalp uh, prevent? effective if you hair transplant later on no way absolutely not i mean as long as you don't hurt yourself but if you use the low depth microneedling 0.25 depth and you gently roll back and forth i mean you could definitely get a few hair transplant later on no problem can patients with atrial if they use a super capsule is a safe so the problem is that minoxidil uh, can cause heart palpitations and atrial fibrillation is basic rapid heartbeat. So I would not use it. I would definitely ask your doctor, your own personal cardiologist before you use Supercapsule. Thank you for that question. What do you know about topical caffeine for adrogenic alopecia and is it effective? Have you ever recommended it? So there are some studies that show that caffeine could actually help her, uh, hair growth. Uh, we currently do not have it in our product uh, because we, although it could be effective, the effect is very slight. Um, it's not super effective. Can I explain the side effect difference between oral testosterone compared to topical testosterone? So look, they could both have same side effects. Oral testosterone is a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor that prevents the conversion of testosterone to DHT. Uh, side effects include sexual side effects like decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, testicular pain, testicular numbness, along with anxiety, depression, fogginess of the head. Uh, topical testosterone could have similar side effects but at a lower rate. Uh, is 0.5 to 0.25 roller long enough if you still have some thinning here yes absolutely that should be fine you don't need any anything honestly deeper than that i'm currently taking uh testosterone therapy um wait a second i'm currently taking hcg uh instead of testosterone however my Latex cell to arm response. So, so, so this is a very specific question. So, basically, one of my patients are asking that they're taking hormonal therapy instead of testosterone. Uh, really, what is the effect of hair loss? So, with HCG is actually different than testosterone. So, we know as a fact that if you add more testosterone to your diet, either through injection or through basically gels, that will increase your testosterone in your body, thus increasing your DHT levels as a result of more hair loss. I actually had a patient last week that said that she went on Google and showed that testosterone does not cause hair loss. That's actually wrong. Testosterone is one of the main reasons of hair loss. This is why spironolactone for females is a testosterone blocker and for for males is actually also a DHT blocker. So testosterone is one of the main reasons for hair loss uh, and adding more testosterone to your rectum regimen will could potentially cause more hair loss. I waste a lot of products because my hair is long. Uh, am I doing something long? 2 ml is enough. So well, I understand. Uh, so this is why we actually have the pipette. See, the benefit of the dropper is that you're going to put it directly onto your scalp and rub it in. As a result, basically, you get less, sh less wasting compared to a spray bottle. Um, but what my recommendation would be, again, try to, sp to spread it as good as you can, basically all over. Uh, I know your hair is long. I mean, there's nothing we could do about it. Does smoking cause hair loss? So what smoking does actually vasoconstricts the blood capillaries, reducing blood flow to the scalp. When you have a reduction of blood flow, a couple of things happen. One, you have less nutrients getting to the scalp, less oxygen to get in the scalp, and less oxygen results in, in elevated DHT level in your scalp because you're not washing it away. So hair, so smoking is bad. Yes, stop smoking. Okay, do, okay. do I have to do anything for the redness of the scalp even if it doesn't bother me? I mean, not necessarily. As long as you're not itching or scratching it too much, you're fine. Uh, if I only use it once a day, will it still work? Yes, it will work, but it will work better if you use it twice a day. 
Uh, can you recap on the root cause of hair loss? Yes, there are many causes. One is genetics. Two is basically your diet. Like if you don't have enough vitamin Ds, iron, collagen, protein. If um, if you're eating like a lot of, I mean, smoking a lot, drinking a lot, all those will affect it. Number three, stress definitely also has a major factor on your hair loss as well. It does DHEA cause hair loss directly? Uh, well, a DHEA could increase the level of testosterone, thus leading to hair loss. So, in an indirect way, yes. Uh, is there a brand that you recommend for protein? Again, I typically don't have a brand. I know there's a brand called Nutricost on Amazon, uh, but again, you could really get any brand you like uh, as long as the whey protein concentrate. All right, guys, last question. Uh, um, question whether to take oral finasteride with elevated ALT and AST. That's a great question. You really have to run that by your own primary care doctor. It depends how elevated they are and why they're elevated. Uh, typically, finasteride should not cause elevated liver enzymes. So, but if you already have elevated liver enzymes, you have to see why you have it. Like, they have fatty liver, do you drink a lot of alcohol? So, there's a lot of different reasons. So, we'll probably check that out first before you start the oral finasteride. Well, right, guys, well, thank you so much for joining us. It was a very effective AMA. Um, again, if you have any questions, please be sure to, uh, to talk to your own regular doctor. All the information here basically does not establish the patient-doctor relationship and it's for informational purposes only. Uh, it, please uh, take a moment and write us a review on Trustpilot. We really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at, at help at happier.com. Uh, and again, thank you for the entire team here for making this possible. Have a beautiful day and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.